Karen Watson. I am 57 and I've been in the hospice uh, as an out a day patient for four years. Oh, I, I couldn't tell you the, the impact. I don't know where I would be without the hospice. I just find it absolutely amazing place to be. Um, I'm part of the ladies group there, which we are affectionately known as Babes in the Wood. For me, it's like an extended family. Um, it's somewhere that I can go and be me. That, that doesn't happen in ordinary life now. You know, you, you don't tell people how you feel, you know. So going to the group, um, I can tell everybody how I feel. You're not judged. People understand because they're going through the same dark journeys themselves. Um, and it's been a complete lifeline for me. Um, when I first went along, we had just moved to the Highlands and I didn't really know anybody at all, so it was quite a, a lonely situation to be in. And somebody suggested going to the hospice, um, which I, I did, and uh, you know, I'm just so thankful that they found them. Well, I'm, uh, I'm also Alistair uh, I am a driver uh, for mainly for the netway, uh, taking people in and out of the netway, going to various meetings. And, uh, uh, I've been doing this for, I'm into my 10th year now. The positivity is just amazing. I, mean, I, I remember thinking, oh, it would be difficult to speak to people and um, what should I say and so on. And in fact, it's just like every time I bring somebody up, it's really, we get, we, there seems to be a, an ability to click and chat away. But I've made lots of friends. My name is Margaret McLeod, and I've been using the hospice for a year. For a, yeah, for just over a year. No, I think it's a wonderful, wonderful place. It really, so happy, so ha such a happy place. And I love it. I hate missing a session which we've had to do since lockdown, but they've, they've kept in touch with me. Never, I've never seen anybody grumpy or, or bad-tempered or, you know, everybody's in the same mood, everybody's great. I was nervous about going the first day, very nervous about going. I didn't know what to expect. I'd never been to a hospice before, but Evelyn came with me. We were just blown away with how friendly and
and I was just amazed by how lovely it was, how amazing the staff were and, and everything like that. So the opportunity came up, just came up for two years ago. Um, it was a one year contract post, six months in the day therapy unit and then six months in the inpatient unit. Um, and I think some people thought I was mad to go for it. <laughs> Um, at the um, best decision of my life. Um, I just feel so lucky and humble to be working here. Yeah, my name's Karen Morrison and I've been going to the hospice for about 16 months. People regard the hospice as you know, the bearded unit where you go to die sort of thing. Um, not, not the net the centre side of things and the support that it gives everyone. I didn't think that I was the type to sort of join a group, but I went along and yeah, it, it was good. It was, it was great to meet up with people that were similar to yourself, i.e. had cancer or a, a life-threatening illness. They didn't tiptoe around when speaking to you or sort of put on any ears and graces, what you see is what you got. It's just a really nice place to be there and I, I really look forward to going in the way to stay. It's just a really nice place to go to that you feel really comfortable in. Um, and for me, that was quite important as well. Um, my name is Carol and uh, I've been working at the hospice for the past 18 months yes, in the housekeeping team. The things that I found uh, really surprising were um, the volunteers, uh, the donations, uh, the hard work of the fundraising department. Um, the, the best thing was I didn't find it a sad place. I found it a place where um, it was quite calm and everybody is lovely, absolutely lovely. I like uh, to be able to work on the board where you get to actually see the patients and have conversations with the patients. Uh, the nursing staff are amazing, but the actual speaking with the patients, speaking with their families, um, is really nice to to meet everybody and get a little background on why they're there and that kind of thing. As a housekeeper, um, you spend maybe 10, 15 minutes in a room, but in that time you can have some brilliant conversations. Absolutely amazing. Um, yes, my name is Leah, and um, I've been at the hospice for six and a half years, I think, by that. Um, and I'm a volunteer. Um, I volunteered in a number of roles, initially started in admin when they were moving in across the new hospice, um, and have since been in day therapy um, and the inpatient unit, and kind of just getting to know the patient staff, socialising, making tea, and just kind of generally coming in for a chit chat. <laughs> The, the people, to be honest, uh, whether it's staff, patients, other volunteers, I've made such good friends, everyone's just so lovely and warm and it's just like a wee family really that you just come in and you're so welcome and you might not have met someone before but you feel like you have and the people you have met before, you might not have seen them in ages but you still just feel like you know them so well. Sarah Robertson, I work on uh, the, the ward reception desk in the inpatient unit and I've been volunteering there for eight years. Uh, the one thing that really struck me actually was in a clinical setting how nice and friendly and how well all the professionals worked together because my experience <laughs> as a nurse in acute set settings hadn't always been like that. And so it was quite different, you know, people were quite caring of each other, how people felt, um, and, and they genuinely cared. There's great banter. <laughs> I, I, I know that seems counterintuitive, but sometimes it's hilarious. 
Yeah, and people are kind and they're nice. Uh, my name is Marcus Hemmings. I work at the Highland Hospice now for nearly four years. And my job role here is facilities and IT manager. Um, I think I was most surprised about the compassion that everybody shared, um, and that actually the the nature of death and dying is um, can be more uplifting than um, it's sometimes portrayed. The time that I've been here, you, you just learn more and more about all the different natures and how you support that and how others in the hospice support it. And all the, the outreaching support that um, is provided for family and um, relatives uh, as well as the patient that stays with us you know it's, it's, it plays an immensely important role and I think my eyes were definitely open to that by actually working here My name is Maria Cuthbert and I'm the Voluntary Services Manager at Highland Hospice. Um, I've worked here for just over 21 years with a six year gap. I took some time out, I had children. Um, and I recruit and support our volunteers, of which today we have 931. Oh gosh, where to start? The people, they're all amazing. The volunteers are amazing, the staff are amazing, the patients are incredibly positive. Yeah, it's just a great place to work. And I've said this quite a lot in the last few years, there's never been a day when I've not wanted to come to work. Not once. In the 21 years I've worked here, um, I've never felt that it's overwhelming. And believe you me, it is overwhelming some days. It's really busy. People are amazing. They're so supportive of Planet Hospice. And our volunteers are incredible. And we've got a large number of them volunteered with us for next year, 35 years. You need to be a very people-focused person, and I am. I could talk for the world. <laughs> so I think that's what I enjoy. It's very much about engaging with people and finding the best in them. My name's Anne Moyer. I've been going to the hospice now for just over four years. And it was one of the nurses from the respiratory clinic at the hospital that told me about it. So she contacted them and we got in touch with me and I went along and we chatted what it's about and so on. Sounded nice and I thought, right. So they've not been able to get rid of me since. <laughs> I think like most people, when you think of a hospice, you think, oh, well, that's somewhere to go and die. But I got my eyes open because I discovered it's always somewhere you can go to live. You know? There's always someone there. If you're needing company, it's there. If, if you want a quiet time, you can do that. Everybody's so lovely. Volunteers, staff. I can't even think of anybody who go on me, actually. So I am Nathan Robertson and I am the Clinical Support Administrator. Um, so I've actually worked for the hospice for nearly two years, but I've only been in this current post for a few months. Um, before that, I previously worked with the reception supervisor on the front reception desk. Definitely, it was worlds apart from what I got. Um, the other charities that I've worked for were more national organisations. So coming to a local charity, it was so different. Um, everybody was so super friendly. Um, like Diane said, I didn't really realise how much the hospice provided in terms of the different services they have. I thought it was just 
a place where people came at the end of their life and that was it, but I'd be totally surprised. Um, I'm Laura Blue-Jago. I um, started using the hospital, well, applied to assist in the, any volunteer jobs in the hospice when I retired from the police. So I, I just wanted to do something worthwhile. I was a bit dubious at first. I thought, oh no, what's going to be a bit morbid in it. But you know, it, could, it couldn't be further from that. Everybody is so helpful and nice. They look the past you. Just the, the, just the friendliness of the place, you know, and it, I think I kind of had it in my head that it might be a bit morbid and people are coming in the car, but it's not at all like that. And you're even getting day people that you've met the centre coming in and using it, and it's so good to speak to them, you know, and at the same time you're still giving to a good cause. My name is Nessie Darling. I lost my husband two years ago and the hospital's got in touch with me and I've never looked back. They were lovely, lovely people. They go out of their way to help in every way they come. I am so happy to have met them all. So very happy. And I've made friends as well along the way. Some lovely friends. I get a good laugh for a kick of uh, 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 learning to make things, things I've never done in my life, and they are true, which is brilliant. Oh, a big, big impact in my life. Yes, a big impact. Well, I look forward to uh, my phone call and the Zoom in every week. I look forward to that. They make me happy. I'm Roy, Roy Stevenson. Um, I've been attending the, the, the Nettie Centre for, it must be coming on two and a half years. So I enjoyed every time I've been there, you know, because uh, there's always a great welcome. Uh, there's always something to look forward to, you know. Oh, any support that I require, you know. Um, any advice, any problems that I do have, I can uh, ask. Um, Kenny's always there, and uh, any of the other ladies, you know, staff members are always there to help, you know. Nothing's a problem. I always feel that if I'm being a bit of useless at times, you know, but that. Uh, you're told that you're not a nuisance and they're, they're there to help and that's what I'm there for, you know, so. I never ever thought that I would be involved with the endorsements, but uh, when, I, when I did get introduced to it, I was very, very pleased, you know, and totally surprised with what it actually was, you know. and luxury I take on the role of quality assurance nurse lead and essentially that means um, as an organisation we make sure that we have high standards of care for our patients and for our service users and my job is to make sure that national standards and local standards for care and patient safety are implemented. I love to see new information come into the forefront. I love to see how the police are doing things and I like to, I feel very proud that when we get, when we have evidence that we're doing a really good job. And we know we're doing a really good job because if you were to come into the inpatient unit and look at the care that's delivered or in the community settings and the care that's delivered there, we know we are. But my job gives that a little bit extra that I can actually prove it. And if someone says to me, prove that you're doing a good job, I can actually say, there you go. That's how I can tell you that we're doing a good job. And um, a lot of people feel 
being questioned on their standards or being questioned on their evidence for good care is a scary thing. I, I see it as a huge privilege that I can show how good we do our job. It's really exciting, yeah. Worked at hospice for just under two years. I am the housekeeping coordinator. What, what I found about here is that the first year that I was here, um, because obviously the, the the management of the hospice, they, they try to encourage a lot of um, mixing and getting involved in things. And the first year that I was here, they, they have something called a staff gathering, which I've never experienced before, but it gives you the opportunity to meet all different um, members of the, the team, the, like the wider team, the shop, the retailers, you know, all the, all the different people that you wouldn't normally meet in the building and even the board, so you were sat round tables with all levels of the, the organisation and it was really nice to experience that, you know, just to... And it didn't matter which department you were in, everyone was interested in what you did. I'm Kirsty Bateson, I'm the Development Officer for Project ECHO here at Highland Hospice. Um, project ECHO is a, a project that, that stands alone within the hospice to enable professionals to be able to share specialist information around palliative and end-of-life care, but also for other specialisms within the medical uh, profession. It's a unique job, it's a job that means that um, myself and my colleague Heather are able to use all the different skills that we have and we've accumulated from the past and make it work so that we can support the ECHO project and support our colleagues downstairs um, in terms of their, their ability to be able to reach um, you know, the, the wider medical community as well. So I'm Heather Butlin, I'm the coordinator for Project ECHO and Kirsten has already explained what the project is about. Oh, it's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I think as Kirsty said, we're a diverse group. What I like, what drew me to the job, because I've not been here long, um, I know what I was reinforced to as a youth thing was, you, yes, you come with skills, but I would say that there's any opportunity for anyone to say, I've got this skill and I want to do this thing, and it gets accepted. So there's definite job roles, but maybe I can pull in some skill that I've had in a previous job, or I think, well, I fancy doing this, and this helps this. So you can bring in anything, there would never be a, no, that's not part of your job, or we're not listening to that. Well, I guess it's the people, they're lovely, um, and everyone's there for the same reason, you can to them, and that helps them, it's quite good fun. It could be seen as a little bit boring, but it's not boring. <laughs> it's also quite fun. Um, I think the majority of the time I am um, at my desk. <laughs> but we get quite a lot of visitors that come back and forth into the finance office, so um, people needing their expenses. So there's a, there's a lot of traffic. I'm Ian Hallam. I used the hospice after being referred there because I was having breathing problems. Ten years ago, I was diagnosed with esophageal cancer. Just over a year now, I've been going through my breathing problems, and they've been absolutely brilliant. They always take me out of myself and give me a laugh. And it's lovely to meet other people because I live by myself, and it can get very lonely at times. Oh yes, it's positive all the time. Even if I've gone in feeling a bit down, I've ended up being cheered up. It's the total sense of peace and relaxation that you get there, and the wonderful attitude of all the staff. It isn't just a narrow 
end of life service. It's a whole life service that they're giving to everyone who attends.